The NBA has long been a league that has featured its stars. In the 80s and 90s, Magic, Bird, Michael, these days, Kobe, LeBron, and Shaq. And then along came the Detroit Pistons to buck that trend. The team with the NBA's best record is just that, a team. None of them were voted all-star starters by the fans, but as you've heard tonight, four have been named reserves by the coaches. On Monday of this week, for the first time, all five Pistons starters sat down for a timeout with John Thompson. When you saw the all-star balloting and none of you guys were selected to start the all-star game, tell me what you said amongst yourselves. The starters, of course, is, you know, it's, it's all great players, but also it's like a popularity contest, you know what I mean? So, like, it could be people that never even watch NBA games but just see the commercials or see, you know, this and that and Foot Locker and this and that. And just that's they vote. What happens if all five of you go? To have a starting five coming off the bench as a reserve, yeah. I, mean, I think uh, I think any <laughs> coach would love them problems right there. <laughs> you guys have become the poster boys for team play, playing together in a culture where everybody's individualistic. How did that come about? Uh, I think, you know, we just. We just five guys, man, that, you know, really don't have no ego, know what it's all about, know how it feels to win, and nobody cares, you know, who gets the glory on this team. Was, was that something that you guys talked about, or did it just happen? It's just the chemistry. I think the chemistry on this team is, even though we went through uh, different coaches, but the chemistry has been the same no matter what coaches came in. So uh, as long as you have the, the, the core group out there, and um, they've been out there consistently over a long period of time like we have. Um, I don't think uh, it really matters. You guys feel that team play matters to fans? I think to our fans it does. Uh, out there in Detroit, you know, that whole little area. But when you look at some of the bigger markets like uh, New York or L.A. or the Miamis, you know, they, I think they're more concerned about the high flyers. Are, are you guys conscious of the influence that you as a team have on high school and college players because coaches cite you as an example of playing together? Are you aware of that? I, I hear more from high school coaches and uh, high school players. You know, when I go back home and just around the city of Detroit uh, about how we play as that, as that one team unit. Do you think the NBA rewards players for playing as a team? You know, I think the you know ultimate reward is is it's what happened. You know, when uh, everybody else is sitting at the house watching and you playing for a championship. A new Lakers franchise mark. 81 for Kobe, an astonishing night. When you saw Kobe score 81 points, what went through you all's mind? First thing that came to my mind was, damn, who guarding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more on the team game, man. You know, I know these guys are more in a team game. I mean, it was an impressive thing that the young boy did, so I, I can't knock it for that. Against our team, I ain't gonna say, you know what I mean, what can or can't happen, but you're gonna have to work a lot harder than that, you know what I'm saying, with these dudes and I say that double teams, happen. and yeah, that, that, that's gonna, you I know what I mean? That. That's gonna be you tough. You take it personally. Defensive team right, like that. Yeah. Uh, it was a good game, both teams play hard. What did you all expect when Rasheed came? Both teams play hard, my man. We was going to jump him on the first day. We was going to jump him. <laughs> now, tell me the truth now. Here comes Rasheed. Rasheed Wallace has been ejected. Technical foul, Rasheed. Uh, Mr. T strikes again. <laughs> what, what did you all think when he first came? I think, you know, uh, before she got there, we was good. But when she came, we was great. You know, I think that was the final piece of the puzzle. It was the four pieces I needed. <laughs> what was the difference for you when you went to Detroit as opposed to when you were in Portland? No more technical fouls? Uh, I mean, I, I played with some great players in Portland, too. I'm not knocking the guys that I played with, but first thing that came to my head was, cool, it's bad. I got some guys that's here, and it's time to go ahead and do it. Knuckle down. Stop getting technical fouls. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it was, they made it easy. They made right. it easy, honestly. You know, I was less frustrated, um, to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, and at times I did get frustrated, you know, it's like, I, yo, let's just go ahead, forget that, forget them, 
let's go ahead and, and get this game, get this win. He was too he was too tired of us locking him down when he came into the palace. I tell him all that time. He was Man, too did we lock him down? We locked him up every time he came in the palace. We shut that <laughs> down. <laughs> Describe Rick, Flip, and Larry as coaches. You know, Rick Carlisle had a, a great offensive playbook, but it was a majority, a lot of half-court stuff. And, uh, you know, we really relied on defense, you know, to try to pull games out. And the same with Larry. Um, with Larry, we really tried to score in the 80s and try to hold teams, you know, under that and really just focus on our defense and try to hold us through. With Flip, you know, he just he want that ball in that bucket. And like Steve Spurrier, he going to still try to put a touchdown on the board, even though he up 30 with two seconds left. Everybody has a discussion now about you guys and that bull mark of 72 victories. Does that ever enter into your thought process? Man, that's crazy. We we never had one conversation about that, and we talk about everything in the locker room, and I mean everything. And we never had one conversation about that. And our whole thing, like we've said, is our whole thing is we just want home court advantage, man. And if that means 53 wins, That's it. <laughs> 63, whatever it is, just one more than whoever win the West. All these games we're winning right now, it, it, they don't mean nothing to us. For real. The media make a big deal about how many games, it don't mean nothing. You know, like Tron said, the one thing that we want is the win home court advantage. And after that, our job is to go ahead and win our championship, nothing less than that. Get that hardware. Team chemistry, you see it when you watch the Pistons play. You feel it mm. when you watch them sitting around just talking to John Thompson, how the Pistons were built. Here's the feather in the cap of Joe Dumars. Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, Richard Hamilton, all through trades. Chauncey Billups is 16, a free agent and a, a draft. Hey, Charlie. Oh.